Welcome to 2021 and welcome to E2 Language, E2 IELTS. I'm Alex. And my name's Jay. And in this video, we're going to talk about passing IELTS in 2021. You can do it and we are going to help you. We sure are. Yay! Okay, so let's say I'm taking IELTS in 2021. Again? <laughs> Again. And let's say I might be taking it next week or I'm taking in three months or six months or I'm thinking like even a year away. Mm, that's good. What should I do, Alex? Well, you've got to set some goals. So the first thing that you should do is download our 2021 goal setter in the description below. I'm going to use that. You're going to use that to set your goals and achieve them. Good. So what things do I need to consider in order to pass my IELTS test? So we've got to think about when, when is your test? Yeah. What scores do you need? Where are you going? Mm -hmm. What are your scores or what's your level now? Right. Where are you? Yeah. Right. Uh, and then you've got to set some more micro goals as well. What are you going to do every day? to improve your reading, to improve your listening. What if I just leave it until the day before the test before I prepare? <sighs> I'll pretend you didn't say that. Don't do that, <laughs> Don't please. Do that. <laughs> it's plenty of time. There are plenty of resources. Yeah. We can do it. Yeah. All right, so in this video, we're going to take you through all four parts of the test. And for each part of the test, we're going to give you two critical tips. OK, so stick around and watch this. Now, why do I actually want to pass an IELTS test? Yeah, I think that's the biggest thing to keep in mind in your preparation because mm. it can be tough. Yeah. Mentally tough, it's physically challenging. tough. Yeah. yeah. You've got to keep in mind what's at the end. Why are you taking the test? What's your goal? And how is life going to change when you open those results and you've got your score? Hang on to that through your test yeah. preparation. That is going to keep you alive. That's what it's all about. <laughs> Where are we going? Okay, let's get started. Writing. Tip number one is get to know all the possible IELTS task types. Now this first tip is all about familiarity with the test. Now if you're taking IELTS academic, yep. task one is um, 150 words or more. But there are lots of different possibilities. You might get a line graph, you might get a bar chart, you might get four pie charts, a process diagram. On test day, you don't want to get a surprise when you open up or when you click on the screen. You want to have seen that before and have written that before as well. I, I think that's a really good tip. In fact, no surprises is what you want to expect or have on test day. The worst thing that can happen on test day is you open up that test booklet and go, oh my God, what's that? I've never seen that before. Yeah. yeah. And of course you have to be flexible. Like task one, yeah, there's a there's a number of tasks that you might get if you're doing general, formal, semi-formal or informal. But within that, you yeah. never know the question or the topic. Yeah. But you know that you're going to write a letter. And if you've studied those three different types, you don't need to ask yourself questions like, how do I start? How do I end? Yeah. Can I use contractions? All of those questions should be answered in your test preparation. That's right. So how do you do it? Well, we've got some videos below to show you. But of course, the best place is on our learning platform on e2language.com. Yeah, so one of the things that we do at e2language.com is we have live classes that happen every day, twice a day with expert teachers. And there will be no surprises if you prepare with us on your test day. Okay. And on the self-study section, all the different task types are there. Mixed yeah. charts, processes, maps, all I, of that. I, I remember I took, because I've taken the IELTS five times, one of them I took it and there were, I did academic, writing task one, and there were three line graphs with two lines each in the line graphs. And I was like, what? Yeah. And I didn't prepare for that. And um, we won't mention my score. But... <laughs> Good lesson. That was then. That's right. This <laughs> Not is 2021. 2021. Okay, so tip number one, get to know all the task types. Writing tip number two. In task two, answer the question. All right, this might seem obvious that when you get your essay question that you actually read it carefully and answer the question, but you'd be surprised people don't. What people tend to do is they have some memorized essay in their head that they're just going to sort of write on test day. 
and it's not going to hit the first criterion, which is? Task response. Task response means that you actually answer the question fully. Mm -hmm. So on test day, you really need to spend a little bit of time clearing your mind, reading the question, making sure you've understood all of it, and your essay needs to address every single part of that question, okay? Mm. Let's have a look at an example, shall we? So this is a question from the Cambridge Book 13. We'll just read it quickly. It says, living in a country where you have to speak a foreign language can cause serious social problems as well as practical problems. To what extent do you agree or disagree with this statement? Okay, so some important features of this question, serious social problems. Can you think of an example? Um, okay, so miscommunications while shopping. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Or miscommunications in a healthcare setting or yeah. these are more specific examples. But yeah, making friends at university, something like that. That's yep. a serious social problem. Practical problems, maybe you're having trouble booking a room in a hotel or buying a ticket yep. on a train. These are the kind of things the examiner wants to see you write about. And the most important thing is this, to what extent do you agree or disagree? Cool. So a, a big problem that could happen with this essay question is that someone just writes about the social problems. And maybe they write about how, I don't know, maybe they just don't get into that in detail. Mm -hmm. They neglect the practical problems. Um, Instead of to what extent do they agree or disagree, they talk about the disadvantages, for example. This is no, 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 no. You read that, you read it all, you understand it all, and your essay must include all of it. Yeah. Yeah? Answer the question. Answer the question. <laughs> Check out the links below. There's a great podcast that you did yes. about this. And Check out some of our sample essays as well. Yeah, actually, in that podcast, it's really good. Um, I spoke to two people from IDP, mm. which is a co-owner of the IELTS test. And these two guys were experts or are experts uh, in IELTS and specifically in IELTS writing. And we spoke to them. I spoke to them about all different aspects of IELTS writing, how to maximize your score. And one of the guys actually said that the major problem that all anyone who struggles the major problem is that they don't answer the question properly or fully. So there you go. Do you think we've made our point? <laughs> made the point. Okay. To achieve your writing goals, what are you going to do each day and each week until your test? Write them down on your 2021 goal sheet. It might be something like rewrite a task one and a task two each day, covering all the different task types or attending a live class or watching a live class on E2, writing a paragraph perhaps if you're just getting started, and maybe each week you might want to do a practice test. Make your own goals something that you can achieve. Yeah, I think these are, these are great goals. Um, with that weekly one of writing a full practice test, one of the things that you want to do is build up endurance because on test day you are sitting there for like three hours, Yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, and if you're doing the writing section last or first, it doesn't matter. You need to build up your endurance. So, mm -hmm. and especially if you're taking the paper-based test with a pencil and you're writing these essays, like you actually need to build up muscular yeah. strength too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's painful. It, it, it gets painful, yeah. Mm -hmm. Reading. Okay, so in order to improve your reading score, you should do practice tests. That's a good idea. But there's much more to it than that. You can, of course, find practice tests on the internet. There's heaps floating around. Just make sure they're good quality ones. The Cambridge ones, of course, are very good. And the E2 language ones are also very good. Just be careful of poor quality tests because they won't be helpful. But that's not a tip, is it? No. <laughs> OK, so imagine you're doing these practice tests and you're aiming for, say, 6.5 and you get 5.5 on the first one. And then you do another one, you get 5.5, and again, you get 5.5. How do you actually increase your reading score? Because if you're just doing practice test after practice test, it's not actually going to help you. You're still stuck at that particular level. So let's take a look at a couple of tips to help your reading score. Reading tip one, grow your vocabulary. There is a really strong correlation between how many words you know and your reading score, basically, or how much you can comprehend when you're reading. So it's a very 
simple equation that the more vocab you know, yeah. the higher your band score is going to be. And it may seem daunting or overwhelming to think, okay, I'm 5.5, I need to go up to 6.5. How many words do I need to know? Luckily, we covered all of this in another video, which you can find linked below. And in that video, I talked about what vocab you need to learn, why you need to learn it, and also importantly, how to learn it. Nice. And it's a, it's a kind of fun thing to learn vocabulary and there's simple ways to do it, like little flashcards, there are apps that you can use as well. And basically being around English mm. as much as possible, yeah. that's gonna improve your vocab. But building vocab should be a really strong part of your IELTS preparation. Yeah, okay, what about also time management? Because that's an issue in the reading section. So knowing lots of words is one thing, but there's an, a special word uh, called, what is it, automaticity. Right. Like yes. automatic. You need to know these words immediately. Mm -hmm. Like if you're looking at a word, but you kind of know it, but you're spending a few seconds thinking, oh, what's that word? If you're doing that a hundred times in the reading test, mm -hmm. that's gonna chew up a lot of time. Yeah? yeah, yeah, yeah. So learning a word is not just printing a list of words, unfortunately, mm. it's meeting those words a lot. It's uh, internalizing the words, producing the words so that yeah. When you're reading, you recognize that word. You don't need to stumble around thinking about it yet. Reading tip two, try the E2 paragraph by paragraph method. So what is this E2 paragraph by paragraph method? It's wonderful. Is it? <laughs> and we've got videos on it, which you can watch on our YouTube channel. We also cover it in our live classes on E2 language and in our methods videos, yeah. which yeah. we just recently updated. They're yeah. in the course on e2language.com. But essentially the paragraph by paragraph method is one particular approach, particularly useful for those longer academic passages. Mm -hmm. I won't go into it here because you'll see the videos linked below if you're interested, but I guess the broader point here is to try a couple of methods. If you are struggling and if you are stuck on 5.5, 5.5 and you're building your vocab but not making progress, yeah. maybe you need to adjust your strategy because one way doesn't suit everybody. Yeah. There's a good expression for that. I can't think of what it is. <laughs> One way doesn't There's suit everybody. different ways to skin a cat. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I don't like that one though. <laughs> yeah, that's awful. <laughs> okay, but you know, a lot of books, a lot of teachers will say, you must skim the passage first. And personally, yeah. I actually don't find that all that helpful. So I use a different method most of the time yeah. because I've tried a few and you should do the same. Don't use paragraph by paragraph because I said to, try it. If it works for you, yeah. awesome, use it. If not, try another method. Yeah, look, I think it, I think these methods are really helpful. They're like step-by-step -step approaches to a particular question type. First of all, you need to understand the question types. I think there are 11 different reading questions in IELTS, Something 11 or like 12. That. Anyway, again, we've got these methods lessons on e2language.com, which take you through every single different question type. And we give you these methods. So next time you're looking at that match headings or true, false, not given, or whatever it is, you're like, ah, oh, yes. I know how to approach this, where to look first, what to do next, etc. And that helps. Mm. Okay, so let's set some goals for your reading so you can improve your scores. What you wanna do on a daily basis is read some sort of article. That might be sciencedaily.com or BBC or whatever newspaper you particularly like. Uh, while you're reading, you might want to summarize the paragraph. Okay, so read the paragraph. A good little tool is to then summarize it into a single sentence. Okay, get the main idea of the paragraph in a single sentence. The other thing you need to do in order to build your vocabulary is to create flashcards. So find five new words a day. Now, you might want to do these by theme, so by technology or health or education, etc. That's really helpful. And it's also helpful if you know if it's a noun or a verb or an adjective. So categorize it by theme and by part of speech or type of word. Uh, on a weekly basis, you might want to do a full practice test. But what's better is if you come along to our live classes that happen every day, twice a day by an expert taught by our expert teachers, and we actually take you through the methods. We actually do vocab building with you, and it's just sort of, it just, 
it's good motivation actually because there's other students in the class, there's a teacher, it's kind of fun, it's really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah? That's it. So we've covered so far writing mm -hmm. and reading. We've given you some suggestions for goals, but share with us your own ideas in the comment section below. Nice. Listening. Jay, you've done the test five times. I have. What's your overall impression or your feeling, your experience with IELTS listening? Um, okay, so I think it's fine as in the audios are quite slow, they're actually quite artificial, they speak very clearly, the accents are quite neutral, you'll get different mm -hmm. accents, but they're, they're very clear, like, mm -hmm. you know, it's not like real spoken English where people are blah, 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 blah right? Mm -hmm. um, however, a few things you need to know is, one, you want to really be familiar with the different question types. Um, secondly, you want to employ the tips that we're about to tell you now. <laughs> okay. Listening tip one, read ahead. This is a really basic test skill, a really basic listening skill as well, but it's also something that when I was teaching in the classroom, I always saw my students mm. sitting, staring at question one, mm -hmm. and we do that in the live class too. I say read to question 10, and I, can, I know everybody is just looking at question one. Mm. That has massive consequences for your score, I can promise you. The difference between just looking at question one or reading before you hear the audio is, is enormous. Yeah. So I know you've heard it all the time. The teacher always says, read ahead, read ahead. The audio in the test says, look at questions one to seven, look at questions yeah. one to six. Make sure that you do it and really not just look at the questions, read the questions. Yeah. I'll show you a quick example. So you might have something like this. There's only four questions here, but a huge amount of text. And you can see if you were just looking at question 21 and reading through A, through B, through C, the time will probably be up mm. and you haven't read question 24. So an example of read ahead, that philosophy for multiple choice is just ignore A, B, C, but you've got to read those questions, 21, 22, 23, 24, the stem of the question. Yeah. And this same tip also applies when it comes to um, the breaks in the listening test. Remember, there's lots of spare time, yes. let's call it, yes. in the listening. There's 30 seconds here, a minute there. Yeah. And the instructions sometimes tell you, um, now check questions, like questions that you did previously. Yeah. And you should not do no, that. No, I agree. You should go forward, whatever go you've forward. done. If you've missed something, yeah. Yeah. just say goodbye and move forward. So yeah. always keep your eyes and your mind ahead. Yeah, look, it's, it's I should say it's kind look, I think the listening test goes for about 13 minutes or something. Like it's about, about 30. Oh, is it 30? Yeah. Oh. Time flies. There you go. <laughs> Time does fly. I'm going to say it's quite stressful because what you're doing is, yes, it's listening, but you're doing a lot of reading as mm. well. Okay. And so especially with like a multiple choice question, You've got to quickly read through it, then you're listening, and while you're listening, you're also reading again. You're just like parallel processing between reading and listening, reading and listening, reading and listening. Or if you're looking at the map, you're looking at the map and listening, looking at the map, listening, you know, mm -hmm. et cetera. So it's it's full on, actually. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And you don't want, when you hear it, you should have already, already read it before. That will make life much easier. Yeah. Read ahead. Listening tip two. Listen to more English. Okay, so what you want to do, of course, in addition to learning about the questions and doing lots of practice in our live classes, for example, is you want to listen to more English, especially if you live in a country where English is not the main language and where you don't hear it that often. So, mm -hmm. Alex, how do you do that? Well, it's so easy now because English is everywhere, yeah. thanks to the internet yeah. and thanks to things called podcasts which are basically free radio shows. We made a video all about this. You can find it in the link below. And that video explains how to use podcasts to increase your vocabulary on the one hand, yeah. also to increase your um, breadth, your ideas, the number oh, of ideas nice. that you know, and, yep. and also to get familiar with um, spoken English, like real spoken English, which yeah. is very different to written English, of course, and as Jay said, yeah. the IELTS listening test, as you'll see in that video, comparing IELTS listening to real English, you'll yeah. notice IELTS listening is much, much slower. So the more that you can listen to real English, real people mm. speaking really quickly, 
IELTS listening will become yeah. a piece of cake. A breeze. A breeze. Yeah. Let's write some goals to increase our score in IELTS listening. Here are some ideas. Every day you could watch a TV show, any TV show, doesn't matter. You could listen to a podcast. Or you could do five practice activities on E2 language. Every week, challenge yourself to do something like listen to a podcast and read the transcript. If you're enjoying watching this video and you think we are wonderful teachers, which is true, you should <laughs> click the subscribe button because we release videos nearly every week, every week, and they are very helpful. But if you really want to practice your IELTS properly, check out e2language.com because only some of the stuff we do is on YouTube. All of it is on e2language.com and it's way more fun there. Okay, so let's talk about speaking. Now, Alex, you were an IELTS speaking examiner for how long? 10 years. 10 years. How many candidates do you think you saw in 10 years? Uh, a lot. <laughs> thousands? Maybe, maybe thousands. Yeah, yeah, a lot. Wow, so you must have seen a lot of good performances and a lot of bad performances, right? Yes, yes. Have you got a, a few tips a range. for us? I've got two great tips for you. Excellent. Speaking tip one, Speak English a lot. This is another obvious one, right? I'm doing a speaking test. I should practice mm, speaking. Yeah. But again, it's something that may seem more difficult than it is. Perhaps you live alone. Perhaps you don't live in an English speaking country. You may not have friends who speak English. You can find them online. There are a lot of people mm. who want to practice on our like Facebook group. People are often looking for study buddies, which is great. The key is though, set it up and commit to it. Yeah. So say, all right, twice a week, this time, you know, make a little Zoom session with the person. Yeah. Alternatively, come and see one of the teachers at E2 Language, join a small group class, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Or you can just talk to yourself. You can talk to your plant. You can talk to the mirror. You can record yourself. Just be but... nice to yourself. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Say nice things to yourself. And you can practice speaking about IELTS questions. We have, um, a video which is below with 20 speaking topics, lots of questions under 20 speaking topics, use them. Or at the end of the day, you can just sit on the couch, talk to your plant yep. and tell the plant, what did you do today? How did you feel? What did you see? What did you read? R reading aloud is also good, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think, yeah, that's some, I mean, it, it's it doesn't, okay. <laughs> it doesn't make it spontaneous, which yeah. is a big part of it, but it can help with, with just that flow, especially yeah. if you're reading aloud like, listening to say a TED talk with a mm. transcript and say there's a nice native English speaker's voice that you like. So you're sort of mimicking them and making sure that your pronunciation is matching their pronunciation. You really have to pay close attention with your ears to make sure that you what you're saying or how you're saying it matches what they're saying. Yeah. That can be helpful. And the reason why this is so important is because when you sit down in the speaking exam, the examiner knows immediately if you haven't been speaking English much. It, mm. when, they, when you say your name, I can tell yeah. that you haven't spoken English today, for example. So you want that language to just be available yeah. and to come out really easily rather than every word that you hear and say yeah. being a struggle because that is going to affect your score. You really yeah. want that flow. So even though it might be uncomfortable, at least for you know a week before your test, try to shut off from your own language mm -hmm. and just speak English. Yep, you won't lose your own language. <laughs> Speaking tip two, practice with the criteria. Okay, so if you're an IELTS examiner or ex-IELTS examiner like Alex, you aren't just giving a score willy-nilly. What you're doing is actually looking at a sort of checklist or what's called the criteria, and then you're listening to the candidate and you're assessing the candidate according to that checklist or that criteria. And it's quite complicated, let's take a look. <laughs> okay, so this is what it kind of looks like and there's these things called band descriptors like fluency and coherence, lexical resource or vocabulary, grammatical range and accuracy as well as pronunciation. And you can see that there are also numbers, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Let's simplify this a little bit. If we look at this one here, fluency and coherence means you speak without effort. You use a range of connective words, discourse markers. You develop your sentences or your topics fully. 
lexical resource is vocabulary. That means you use the vocab precisely and flexibly. You use some less common or idiomatic vocab and you use paraphrasing. Grammatical range and accuracy means you use a range of structures, lots of different structures, and you produce them error-free. Those sentences are error-free. Lastly, you have pronunciation, which includes intonation, emphasis and stress, connected speech, and clear pronunciation. Oh my God, speaking is very complicated. These are all the different parts or elements of a good performance. So, mm -hmm. Alex, what do I do as a candidate? Should I just be, should I get that, a tattoo maybe? A <laughs> tattoo of the criteria on my arm. Yes. That's a good idea. Yeah? Yes, that is the best idea. That's, a good idea. <laughs> That's my tip for the day. There is a lot to think about, definitely. And, and the examiner is thinking about all of those things as you speak. On test day, you shouldn't really be thinking about that stuff at all. If you've prepared yeah. well, on test day, you are just there with your confidence and your flow of English. But our tip was to practice with the criteria before your test, yeah. like from now, give some attention and some uh, time to each individual criterion. Yeah. So let's say today we're going to do a speaking test with you or with my plant. Mm -hmm. I've got my um, test on my phone or printed out and I'm going to do it by only, I'm only going to focus on one aspect of the criteria. Mm. So today I might be just thinking about grammar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm just thinking what are some of the grammatical structures I can use? Maybe make a list mm -hmm. or you can find one online. Like I'm going to use five different tenses. I'm going to use a conditional. I'm going to make some complex sentences. Yep. Uh, I'm going to use gerunds. Uh, modal I'm gonna, verbs. I'm going to use modal. So I have a list of things. And then as I do my speaking test, I'm sort of checking off that yep. I've used them all or recording myself. Of course, on test day, you're not going to do that because if you're concentrating on grammar, yeah, fluency is going to drop. Maybe vocab is yeah. going to drop. Yeah. Pronunciation, you're hesitating a lot. That's all right. This is just preparation. Yeah. But the yeah. idea is that, oh, cool, I used a conditional there. I'm more confident using a conditional. Or I listen back and I made errors with my tenses, so i got to fix that up so that next time it happens more automatically. So practice with the criteria before your tests yeah. and focus on those things that you need to work on. This is where feedback from an expert will really help you agree. as well. Yeah, agree. Agree. Your feedback's critical. Um, one of the things we offer on E2 Language are tutorials, one-on-one 45-minute -on -one, tutorials with experts where you'll actually do uh, speaking practice tests with them. We also have the mock test, which includes mm -hmm. a one-on-one -on -one speaking mock test done on the computer via Zoom. Mm -hmm. um, this that one's is, great because you yeah. get like really detailed feedback on the checklist and even more detailed than that from the teacher yeah. to show you what you're doing well and where you need to improve a bit more too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so the, the criteria is, is critical. That is really what you're scored on. It's not just plucked from thin air by the examiner. This is what it's all about. And it's also the same for writing, by the way. Writing also has a set of criteria mm -hmm. and you should really be understanding how that all works. Now, you can go about doing this by yourself, of course. If you're a linguist or a philosopher, that might be fine. But if you're an average Joe who just wants to pass the test, let us do the heavy lifting in our live classes. I think that's the best idea. Let's set some goals for speaking. Okay, so here are some possible speaking goals for you. On a daily basis, you might just want to spend like 10 minutes a day where you speak for four minutes on a topic, then three minutes on the same topic, then two minutes on the same topic. This will help you to become much more coherent and precise. Of course, one of the IELTS speaking tasks is a two minute monologue. So that's good practice. Uh, you should do a speaking test with a grammar checklist. So as Alex mentioned before, you might want to have a list of different uh, a range of grammar that you can include while you're speaking. Okay, so you want to also set yourself a weekly goal that you speak English for 30 minutes every day. And there you have it. That is our top tips to get you started on your IELTS preparation for 2021. You can find all the links that we talked about below. Make sure that you subscribe so you are the first to know when we release a new video or when we're teaching live. For more help, more personal help, join us on e2language.com. Finally, make sure you share your goals with us in the comments below. 
and let's conquer IELTS. Yeah, together. let's do it. Happy New Year.